Oh, hi! This week, I had a different plan in mind, as seems to be the case lately. This mound of stuff right here is for teaching you how to make a gathered skirt. And I know I've been talking about this for a while, and I started filming on Tuesday, today's Thursday, and it was already off to a weird beginning, as shown here. If I sound slash look like I have been crying, it's uh, because I have been. And then once I sat down and took my new measurements, cause I have put on a little bit of quarantine weight, which like, hey, we're all coping however we can. Don't feel bad about it. And I was breaking down the math in like a really easy way, but I also had a hangout with some friends and we were drinking and playing games, and then I had a little bit more to drink than I have been lately and uh, tried to explain the math to you, which will shock you, didn't go well and is unusable footage. Gathered skirt tutorial is going to happen. I'm going to give myself the deadline of next Friday, so May 8th, I think we're gonna do gathered skirts come hell or high water. I have the fabric picked out, I have everything sorted, I got the math done, we're gonna make it happen. It is gonna be a little more involved and comprehensive and I may just break it down into separate parts, so like the pattern making and the waistband and then the pockets and then like putting it all together, but that is for next week. I don't have it in me to do that today, like film the whole process and edit it and have like a decent video out tomorrow. I want it to make sense. And a lot of you seem to appreciate the more comprehensive video I did doing bias tape last week. So what I'm trying to say is I want to give this project its due diligence and I can't do that in a less than 24 hour time span. It's coming. I know I keep saying it's coming, but like it is on deck to be sewn together. As for what we are going to do this week, it's something I saw on Instagram, like a different version of this scissor holster, but I want to make a necklace version for either my teeny tiny pair, which I've actually been using for a lot of washi tape, so it's kind of gummy right now. Or the things I use probably the most are my little thread snips. They're so good and they make the best noise. So yeah, I, I kind of need these on hand and when I have them next to my machine, as I'm sewing stuff, they tend to get lost like under the fabric or kicked around. Sometimes accidentally impale my own leg because I have shifted something here and it's like fallen into my lap. So I would like to just have them in a spot that's easy to get to. And then if I'm up and moving around and ironing and find some threads I get a snip, I can just go ahead and unsheath it and tackle the uh, little, little hairs sticking out of the project. So since I can't go to stores to get new material and I'm on a no buy year, so it's, it's kind of convenient timing, at least if we're gonna have to deal with the plague that it's happening when I am intentionally not shopping for anything I don't absolutely need anyway. I'm going to use up some scraps I have laying around. Now I do want a thicker, more durable material because using like a cotton or something soft, the scissors are gonna go right through it. But I have this leftover vinyl scrap and hey, remember this when I showed you how to make a little faux leather beer koozie thing? This is one that got cut out real cockeyed, but I didn't want it to go to waste. So of course I've been hoarding it this whole time and we're gonna use it to make a little scissor holster. So it should be a pretty quick project, but I think it's gonna be one of those that takes no time to put together, but then I use all the time, every day. Aren't those just the best ones? All right, here's what you need. This is just coffee. This is actually coffee I had yesterday. I already drank today's coffee and this was still sitting and I don't put milk or sugar or anything in it. So I, uh, I, I will just accept my grossness. And I know my hands are big. I promise this is like a half size mason jar and not like an actual giant one. So yeah, I am using faux leather vinyl scraps for this. It shouldn't take a lot of material because these are so tiny, but obviously you can make bigger scissor holders if you want to keep your fabric shears on you at all time. These are pretty heavy. I'm also going to use this scrap chain I've had laying around. It's kind of too bulky and honestly just very cheap looking. It doesn't look very nice, so I haven't used it for any of the jewelry I've listed in my Etsy shop. I get nicer chain for those kinds of things. But as we all know, I have much lower standards for myself than other people. So <laughs> I'm gonna use this for me. So this is a pretty long chain and I'm okay with it hanging pretty low actually. So I'm going to use this whole length. And yeah, just whatever you have. If you have nice chain and wanna treat yourself, then you know, you do you. Also just found some random kind of bigger size jump rings. If you can even see them against my ghostly pale hand. I'm also gonna use a hole puncher, but anything you can use to make some kind of hole in both layers of the material we're going to attach together. Okay, now let's make the shapes. Let's see what we can work with. So I think I'm going to use this koozie since it's wider for these scissors. I want them to stick out 
of the top a little bit. So I'm going to take a marking tool, which I also didn't list. Oh, also like a sewing machine and matching thread and like anything else you want to decorate this with. So I'm just going to trace around this fairly loosely. It doesn't need to be a super snug fit. Just something like that. And then I'll go a little bit outside that for the seam allowance. And if you're doing something that's going to be symmetrical, all you do is you just fold it in half, you know, pick, pick whichever side looks neater, really. And then you just cut both out at the same time and it'll get a nice mirror image. like this. And now I'm just going to do the same onto this side. I sure could have cut these both at once, but sometimes I feel like being an agent of chaos. All right, so I've got my two matching layers. If there's a little bit sticking out, like we can clean it up once it's stitched together because we're not going to have to like fold the edges in or anything. This material doesn't fray, so I think I think we're going to be good. All right, and then for this tiny guy, same thing. I want it sticking out of the top a little bit. Did I fuck this up too much? I'm already doing a very bad job at this. Remember when I mentioned the hole puncher? You need to account for the holes we're going to punch. What a meathead. Okay, so to account for the holes, I'm going to flare out the top a little more. We should have enough room over here. I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, not too bad. And honestly, if you just want one jump ring on like one end, that'll also be fine. I may have to do that. For this set, we're like, as long as it's attached, these are super lightweight, so I don't need two points of weight distribution. I think we'll be in the clear. Everything's fine. We're in quarantine. We're working with what we get. See, also, I'm a giant meathead and only half pay attention to what I'm doing. But again, brain-wise, we're in quarantine and I'm working with what I got. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to sew the sides and bottom of both of the shapes, leaving the top open, just wrong sides together. We don't need to do any turning or flipping because as I said, this doesn't fray. I'm gonna do pretty small stitches just so the little pointy bits have nowhere to slip through and accidentally stab me if I have to bend over or something. Oh, and you know what? My machine has yellow thread on it which I'm going to lean into because Hufflepuff. So a couple notes for using this material. I switched to my walking foot because it's like kind of, it can get kind of tacky. So if you have a Teflon foot for your sewing machine, now's the time to use it. Help that baby glide right through. And also the other thing I was going to say has slipped my mind. Are we surprised? No. Oh, if you put a pin through this, it's gonna leave a permanent hole and also honestly just be kind of a pain in the ass to pin. So I am gonna take a couple of these craft clips and just put it in a couple spots. That way it won't leave any marks. But you know, if you have like a clothespin or bulldog clips laying around, use whatever you get. I'm certainly not a product elitist when it comes to anything, but especially making things. And I was thinking, as I was threading the yellow bobbin in here. Any tools that I have sitting around that I use a lot, like this seam ripper, it would be handy to have a little like on my person carrying case because I have to reach for these all the time. Less so the tweezers. It's pretty much only when I'm threading my bobbin. But you know, my seam ripper, same thing. If it's on the table where my project is, it ends up getting lost in the fray. And uh, that's something you definitely want to have on hand, at least for me, because I fuck everything up. As shown, by me immediately forgetting one of the steps of the project. So, you know, don't be too hard on yourself and work with what you got. That's that's today's moral. All right, I'll shut up and get to sewing. All right, so listen, some of the stitching looks better than some of the other stitching. We're gonna be kind to ourselves during this time. All right, I'm just gonna go over and clean up any uneven edges, make it look pretty. All right, here we go. Let's do a little test fit. It's so cute. All right, so I think if I put one hole for the jump ring just off to the side here, this will still be fine and functional. And yeah, it seems like similarly, if I just put one hole on this side, that's gonna be fine. Ooh, I've also had a thought as far as making this interchangeable because I don't tend to have both things going and I, I don't have more shitty chain. So I'm just gonna use little lobster claws on the jump ring and then I can swap it out off the little necklace. Oh, I love this. So yeah, there are some options as far as how you want to attach this. All right, so with this in here, just so I'm making sure I'm positioning everything correctly, I'm gonna pick a spot not too close to the edge that I think it's gonna tear, but also close enough to the edge that the jump ring can fit through it. Punch a hole. Oh God, okay. So there's a little hole there and a fit jump ring through here. Did I mention you need pliers? Cause you need pliers. I just have super cheap like jewelry making ones. I have two different sets actually, because I like using the flat needle nose ones for opening and closing jump rings. Oh, right. I need to attach the lobster claw to the jump ring 
before I close this up. And that's what that looks like. Oh, I'm excited. And actually, that's less in the way than I was expecting. So these can slide pretty snugly down there. <gasps> You guys, I only very recently thought of this idea and the fact it's already coming together. Like that doesn't happen. I, I normally take way longer with projects because I have like such a long list of other shit I want to do, such as a gathered skirt, that it almost feels like cheating, letting other projects jump in the line. Does anybody else think about shit like that or is that just me? It's like I feel bad for the things I'm not tending to because there's a nice new shiny thing. And now I just need to take one other jump ring and attach the two ends of this chain together. Here we go, putting these together just like that. And again, if you want to hang a permanent little holster off of here, you would just loop your punched hole through this jump ring and just have it off there. But oh, I'm I'm really jazzed about the last minute idea to put little lobster claws on here. And then if I really want to, I can have two going at any given time. I love it. All right, let's give it a try. I feel like I should still have more steps to do, but we're done now. <laughs> and good too, because I can feel myself getting a little shaky. I've had a lot of coffee and not enough food yet. I did have lox on a bagel for breakfast this morning and cream cheese, obviously, but you know, not the most substantial breakfast. So let's slide our little dudes in here. And, oh my God, you guys, I love it so much. This makes me feel weirdly badass. Look at these babies. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, I can already tell I'm gonna use the shit out of this. And like, I can swap out a ton of, if I just wanna keep a little pen here and I wanna stick it behind my ear. I wear glasses. I've never been able to like hold a pencil behind my ear. I've always envied people that can. But yeah, what a useful little thing. I highly recommend doing this with whatever you may have at your set. Put your fucking vape pen in there. Are people still vaping? Is that a thing? <laughs> this is great. Okay, I need to stop being so confused about a project going well and not taking a long time. I'm gonna make some lunch, get this together. You'll be seeing this on Friday, so happy May. Congratulations on surviving uh, the worst April, not of my entire life, because April a couple years ago was one of the worst things I've ever experienced. This sure has been a close second, and I hope things are better in the next month, but who the fuck knows what's gonna happen. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and being as safe as possible. I've been thinking about so many of you during all this just cause you know, shit's crazy and I worry about people. I did spend most of yesterday putting together my Patreon gifts. So like my mail time perk and my custom shit tier. And I'm, I'm so excited and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all of you that are over on my Patreon. I know I gush about it all the time, but it is literally what has kept me able to do this between that and my coffee and my Etsy shop. And it's why I'm able to keep doing videos every week. I hope you like the stuff I've put together. It has been such a treat putting together actual physical things that I can like send out to you all. And it's been really nice seeing everyone's projects over on the Discord that I opened up for patrons too. So yeah, let's do another live stream tomorrow. I had such a nice time last weekend sitting out in the sun. It's like the perfect day. Yesterday was also super nice. I got to sit out with my little bean boy for a while in the afternoon. The sun has been doing me a lot of good. It's raining again today and it's pretty cold out and it has been rainy most of the time lately, but any, any chance I get to enjoy good weather, I am making myself do it, even if I'm in a really bad mood. But yeah, sometime late morning-ish, it's been very helpful not setting a time too far ahead and just letting you know within like 15 minutes when it's gonna start. I've been posting on my Instagram and my Twitter and my Facebook like when I'm gonna be live streaming. So keep a look out there if you don't follow me. I can hear my tummy grumbling very loudly. So I'm gonna go get some food and stop having shaky hands. And yeah, I'll see you with the fucking gathered skirt video next Friday. I hope this was a somewhat helpful or useful tutorial and I will see you tomorrow if you're around for the live stream. Thank you so much for hanging out. I just want to feel like a glam Han Solo is the reason this is happening.